Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Time, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Subscribe, like, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is Fosworth Friday. Dominique Fosworth, what's going on? Nothing. Happy to be here and also realizing that I just told some people some stuff that ain't true because I was talking to some young athletes who aspire to get into podcasts and media and stuff, and I was impressing upon them how much you got to prepare and how you can't just roll the ball out there, cut the mics on, and make magic happen, and that is true for most of the things that I do professionally. But then I went from that straight to sit down and do Fox for Fridays where it's like, yeah, we just cut the mics on and somehow we make magic every week. Look, all I'm saying is just because LT can smoke rocks and be an all pro, don't beat everybody can smoke rocks and be an all pro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I honestly didn't realize because, you know, you've worked with me long enough now. I ain't got no notes. Yeah. I don't, I'm just kind of out here. Like, I, I, I remember some stuff and stuff will come up. It was a long time before I realized it didn't work that way for other people. Yeah, I remember. I've told this before, but the first time I was, I think I was around you. It wasn't the first time, anytime. You were down in Miami and you were doing your radio show from Miami and you did the entire radio show while playing some computer or some iPad uh, <laughs> puzzle game. And the man is playing a puzzle game during the radio show the whole time. But I don't necessarily mean preparation, like write down what you're going to say, but like you do lots of, you read everything. Like you have plenty of information in your head. Maybe you don't need a format for the show, but yeah, uh, I, I, smoking rocks and playing football. I don't know that that makes you worse. I well, I mean, here's my thought on that. It's not so much the smoking rocks and playing football, but like I feel like smoking rocks the night before. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like fair. I feel like, and I could be wrong. I ain't never smoked a rock before, right? <laughs> but if you smoked a rock like 30 minutes before kickoff, I could see the argument. I mean, yeah. I don't seen I don't seen some rock stars do some amazing things, right? <laughs> so, like, if if you smoked a rock 30 minutes before a game, I can see how that might work. But if you out here 10 o'clock at 10 o'clock at night and it's a one o'clock kick the next day, and you out here smoking rocks, I don't think I'm reading uh, Jeff Perlman's uh, Showtime, the book for Winning Time. And they would talk about Spencer Haywood smoking them rocks. Oh, and yeah. I don't know, like basketball don't feel as conducive in the same yeah. way for like crackhead behavior. Yeah, I think that football is is definitely, especially that position uh, on defense, when you are there to create havoc, there is something about that. And not everybody's body chemistry is such that it can metabolize a rock in the best way. But that man optimized his rock time. It was definitely a PED. And I, I mean, I guess you could argue that he could have been better without the rocks. I don't know well, that well, you could be it. any better than LT is the that, thing. That's what I was going to ask. Would LT be better or worse without the rocks? I think that there are some like freak occurrences in nature that cannot be improved upon. And that is one piece of history. I, I can't imagine a better version. You want me like, no, he couldn't have been better. Like the man was like legitimately unblockable <laughs> and so good that he won Super Bowls uh, with uh, Jeff Hostetler. Like, what are we yes. talking about? No disrespect. It was Sims, terrifying. But like, yeah, like this is that that was a man that he revolution. They started looking for people like him after him. Like, it was they, that idea didn't exist that he showed up and they were like, oh, we could get this type of guy. And then people started to, like, think about the, the game differently. Bruh, they had to invent the H-back. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's like, just, yeah, it's like Kareem. The it's like, we can't dunk no more. So I, he develops a, a hook shot. You're just so good that we, like, we got to change. We got to tiger-proof this. We got to come up. We have. I got to come up with something. And we got to practice this something all the rest of the season so that it might work when we actually do it this week against LT. Like, this. And again terrified i think i've told you about lt playing basketball right uh no <laughs> so this <laughs> this 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 for this this for the bobody jones day ones they know this story so my brother used to play ball at this gym in north jersey and so the thing about when you're out there kicking it in north jersey like i was talking to Mero about this Mero's talking about like seeing the last names in his kids sports leagues and it's all former giants right like yeah. that's especially for like 
80s, 90s Giants because the Jets facility used to be on Long Island. It's not the case no more. They moved to Jersey, too. But it's the Giants that were in New Jersey. And so it'd be all kinds of Giants. Like my brother stayed getting uh, confused with Howard Cross. I don't know if you remember Howard Cross. He used to play tight end for the, uh, for the Giants and in a much different weight class than my brother has ever been. But just enough in common, just enough that he had been <laughs> Like my brother stayed getting back people like you know you look like my brother's like no i don't but i know who you're gonna say like who howard <laughs> cross how'd you know right so anyway this means that occasionally he'd be at a gym and lt would come in to hoop now first of all can you imagine how terrified lt was at intramurals my gosh i assume that lt <laughs> you- play play basketball the way that most football players play basketball Yes, running the lanes and being physical, especially since he was playing back in the day when all the head checking and stuff was standard operating procedure. This was not a game of movement, right? It was a man's game back then, right? So, but LT was futuristic with his game, actually. My brother said LT would get the ball and he'd be 30 feet from the basket and he'd put it up. And every time he put it up and go the same way, LT get the ball, put it up and go, woo, LT in the house. <laughs> LT in the house. LT in the house. I, yeah, I actually have heard this story, and he was not making these shots, if I remember no, he was correctly. Not. And, he was not who, making these shots. Who go? Who go and check me? <laughs> nope, it was almost LT. Almost, almost. The question now: Who was going to check LT? The answer was obvious: LT. LT yeah. was self check. Who was going to tell LT that he was self check? That's where the answers yeah. get scarce. <laughs> Yeah, uh, LT is the guy. He keeps shooting. And they like it's all right. Keep shoot and shoot, man. Yep. Shoot and shoot. You better encourage that brother because he's not gonna stop shooting it. He came there to shoot, which I kind of respect. I didn't come here to run organized offense. I came here to shoot and be an athlete. Yes. Now let's switch gears just a little bit. We got a few things to talk about. It's one of them days, folks. Ain't no football season left, so we gonna go around. I got to talk to you. You and I talked a little bit about talking about this going into it, but it just passed before my face, right? EA Sports is going to budget out six point six million dollars to get the NIL rights for eleven thousand players because they bring in NCAA football back. All right. Now before we get to that part, I imagine that especially since the NCAA football was kind of cracking while you yourself was actually on the game. I imagine y'all boys played a lot of NCAA football. Did you leave yourself as yourself or did you uh, Robert book style? This game don't show my breakaway speed and make adjustments. I mean, I didn't have to I, I, the first year. Maybe I had to, but like, I didn't have to. I think I got up to like 96 on that game. It was, yeah. I need to add no abilities. So I was out there. I was better on the game than I was in real life. I was, I, I want a few people who liked the Madden rating system. But yeah, that, we didn't, honestly, we didn't play that much college. We played Madden mostly. I'm not sure why we didn't play that much college, but we all got to y'all college. ain't know who the hell these, y'all ain't know who the hell these dudes in college was. Y'all, y'all was too busy playing football to be yeah. like us figuring this out. You know, to get the, the hookup always used to be, you send a little money, you get the memory card, and then you yeah. get all the names. And you knew what the bullshit was because you would send the memory card off and then you get all the names. And instantly the computer knew how to pronounce all the names, even the African and Samoan ones. They knew how to say them all. It ain't matter how many apostrophes or Z's or K's or N's or whatever it was that was in there. They knew how to say them all. And you realize, oh, okay. All they was doing was taking all the first names and all the last names that actually existed and put them in a random number generator. And a random generator. And so when you created new players, that's what they would do, right? That was their game. I remember this, though. This is what you figured out how to do, at least to make the game more fun back in the day, because this is before, you know, we had a lot more standard drop back passing, but we was phasing out that option, right? Because I used to play with Texas, and I played with Texas. It was Chris Sims' senior year, but they had this true freshman named Vince Young that was on the bench who had no business passing, but what did that matter when he was 6'5", 240, and we could run that option over and over and over. I ended Chris Sims' career so fast. It was a wrap <laughs> on that. <laughs> that game, uh, I guess they changed the programming at some point, but for much of our upbringing, an athletic quarterback was a cheat code in video games because the D-line was slow as hell, the linebacker was sh- slow as hell, and you could destroy because the game was not programmed to adjust for somebody who ran that fast in that position. You might as well put – you didn't even have to throw because, like, right. the pro, everyone would drop back and then you just – take off or run the option it was it was cheating 
without having any idea how to actually run the option. I ain't have no keys. I wouldn't read no <laughs> unblocked feel, man. Baby. I was just like, I just like, first of all, we ain't giving it to this fullback. Like, I can just tell you that right now. That's not, that, that is not <laughs> are, why are, I woke up this morning. Team. We yeah, are not yeah, a yeah, triple option like, team. <laughs> yeah, speed option, strong option, whatever it is. But I did not wake up in the morning to get a ball to this motherfucker. Not one. No, sir. <laughs> We not going to do that, right? We not uh-uh. even keeping the defense honest. No, nah, man. EA had the industrial complex at the time, though. People don't realize yeah. this because you run the NCAA and you keep you you send them guys off to the draft classes and then you send yeah. the draft classes off to your Madden class. And I remember this is this is this is some of my greatest work. OK, so it was that same Madden that I was just talking about. And what was crucial about that year of Madden was. It was after, uh, no, this is one year after that. Either way, it was the Madden 04, the one that came out in 03. So Maurice Claret had already played his freshman year, and somebody people don't remember, the homie Big Mike Williams at USC had already played his freshman year, and they were unforeseen beasts as freshmen. And so that meant that Maurice Claret and Mike Williams came in 03 as 99s, as sophomores and so what i did was i let the college play out and they both came out after they junior years and i knew they were both in the draft and so since i'm a real person my scouting acumen was much different than the computer they ain't really know how to figure out who was who and what was what like who the real bosses were and so i get that draft when they both in there i trade up to the one and two picks I get those two dudes. I put them out there with the greatest video game football player of all time, Michael Vick. Yep. Of that, of that, the, the Michael Vick on the cover version. Oh boy, it was 10 years of dominance, man. We give so like I I don't know if you do this, but generally we give people like young kids these days a hard time about how much time they drain in the social media and other things that we deem meaningless. Boy. Did I burn many an hour <laughs> building myself a college dynasty in uh, NFL franchise mode? Oh, now we would do it with friends sometimes, like have a sleepover or something. And then like I was in like middle school, high school age, and we spent all night getting to like 20 years down the road trying to win championships and recruit. Bro, I'd be up all night recruiting. And the thing that makes the recruiting more illogical than anything else is like, I really thought I was recruiting. <laughs> like, like I really, I really felt like I, I really felt like it was actually about me. Okay. <laughs> like I had, I had a catch line that I would always hit the players with when I was like, I go through and do all the stuff and I got in my mind, maybe you're going to change the position or whatever it is. But I just always hit them with just so you know, son. There's a place for you at the University of Texas. I will be saying that to the screen like they could hear me. <laughs> like they could really so test fun, my though. sincerity. I just up all night, up till two o'clock in the morning. Just doing it so this. Fun. I did um I built up a franchise with Bethune Cookman because I thought they had cool uh, a cool logo. And it was just like, can, can I make this team good? You got damn right I can. Cause I'm a pound of pavement. I'm be out there. I'm be giving people. I would be just like you. I didn't. I didn't have a, a catchphrase, but I would be jokingly sliding people keys to cars. Oh yeah, we gonna get you. We gonna get you over here, Beth Cook, and get rolling. Well, see the other thing you figured out too, and I noticed this as it would go year for year for me on my franchise. You just had to be in the right state, cause baby. Yep. I wasn't using them, but Rice and TCU and North Texas, they would turn into powers. And the reason was they'd have they'd have to play against your boy. Cause I was out here destroying some Aggies and some Red Raiders and some Bears in them. They ain't want no parts of this, right? Cause all them boys that there was a place for at the University of Texas, they wasn't going over there. They couldn't get nothing done. They knew you might have a chance at North Texas to go to like a you know a real bowl game. You wouldn't go into one at Oklahoma because I was going. Every year. Did you ever fail? Because I feel like I maybe I just erased this from my memory, but I don't feel I feel like every team I tried to start a, a dynasty with uh, would eventually become like the best team in the nation. If I like 10 years in, we were dominant. I feel like they just they programmed it. So if you put it if you put in the time, which I guess is fair, if you put in the time, which I definitely did, you was going to get there. Oh, oh, well, this leads to a very important question about 
just, you know, how you got down, what kind of person we all are. What level did you play on? Oh, yeah, you got to play on the top, All-American. Oh, Heisman, my bad, Heisman. I played on All-American. Oh, okay. I was, I was here to have fun. Yeah. I wasn't really looking for a challenge. After a while, the fun for me was simply roster construction. I'd oh, simulate yeah. out the season. And then go through. Oh yeah, yeah. Put together. I would simulate like to simulate the season too, but I would always yeah. end up with enough blue chips that it ain't matter what offense we ran, what defense we ran. We was well. That's the other part. That was the thing for me. I should have like I would get to that point. And I, hey, I loved a good position switch, baby. Like you six six two forty. I don't know who told you you was a linebacker, son. You're not. <laughs> the hand in the dirt, fella. <laughs> I had all kinds of things for you. You might be out here catching. You know what I'm saying? Those were the days. I mean, I don't think those as excited. I feel like people our age are excited to hear it coming back. But ain't nobody going back to that. Don't nobody got that amount of time to dedicate to. Uh, oh, I'm not. No, they it. put it online now. You gonna be going up against other people? You just have franchises online. Oh, possibilities. Well, well, hold on. Here's the part we gonna find out how bad it people are because all the people that was out here advocating for like players getting paid and everything else. All that would go out the window when somebody would start talking about that video game or a playoff, yeah. right? Now, all of a sudden, none of them principles matter. They just they just ride out with this. But EA Sports, this is, this is the way that my man Mike Florio puts it. EA, which is worth more than $37 billion, has budgeted $6.6 million to try to secure the NIL rights of 11,000 players at a mere $600 each for the new college football video game. It's a... Uh an impossibility like six hundred dollars dominique yeah that's that's unfortunate six hundred dollars ain't like they ain't got it dog ain't like they ain't got it and this gets me to what i i'm trying so i got to fighting with some people on the internet i swear i'm gonna stop doing this right but as long as i keep doing a podcast or something i can't just quit it all god i want i've done it before anyway um I think that people, and we did something on Game Theory about this, they overstate what this NIL thing really is. It's a hassle as much as anything else, but these cats ain't really making money like most people think. Some of them are, like a small handful are getting themselves some cash. That cash, by the way, is like a payday loan, but that's a whole nother discussion for another day, right? Most of these cats ain't really getting no money. They really just going to throw $600 at people to be part of this game. Come on, man. They can do better than that. I think what will probably happen eventually is like as we see all this stuff going to um, the like super conferences, like eventually they're going to cut off all the other things. It's going to be a, a Madden style game where there's much fewer teams, top 60 teams or something like that. And they'll pay because I think the economics of the situation, be my guess is it probably doesn't make sense to make the game at all to pay the people what they deserve. But the game is profitable and you don't have to pay people what they deserve. You pay people what they will accept. And since they, most of these players name, image and likeness ain't like, ain't all that valuable to your point. They're going to take that $600. They want to be in the game. First of all, well, that, see, that's the part they get the ball, stupid ass kids, right? Like, I mean, I know six hundred dollars ain't what it used to be, but baby, if you'd have walked up to me in nineteen ninety eight talking about six hundred dollars, I'd have signed a record contract. Like, it would have, whatever it was, six hundred dollars would have got it for you. Um, but what it, what it might turn into, and I think you put it right, but I think it might be like this across the board. They gonna throw that money out. You're right for the power of whatever's left. It's gonna be like the power two, the way our country yeah. works, right? We started off with a power six. Or, or, you know, the BCS conferences, whatever, we went to a power five. It's probably going to go down with that, but the power. But the rest of them, like Prairie View, they're going to be out there calling y'all anything. You know, you still going to be DT96 yeah. down there. They're going to put in the programming effort and the recruiting and payment effort for the uh, 200 times that people play with Prairie View. No disrespect, Prairie View. However, if you go to Prairie View, you ain't playing with Prairie View. You were playing with someone else, with players that you know are going to play on Sunday. I tried to to get my pride on, right? I once tried to get out there and rock out with like the HBCU. I don't think it was Prairie View, but it was some HBCU, and I wanted to play with the whole conference, you know, just play the games. And I have to tell you, that was not nearly as entertaining uh, as it was <laughs> to play with the white man schools. <laughs> The white man's the white man's wow. school that it, it gave me much great. It, it was it was that car had much better handling, 
right? Like, you know how it is when you rent a car that's better than your own? Yeah. And then when you rent a car that's not as good as your own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why would you? I mean, I, I get it. Like, I, I started a, a, a dynasty with uh, Bethune Cookman, and it was fun eventually. At first, it was <laughs> not. But, however, like, yeah. It's a lot harder for Prairie View in real life. Why you go into a fantasy world and expect it to not be? Just It's a lot harder for Prairie View and Prairie View like individuals. So when I go into a video game, generally, I would like things to be fun. And as you said, all American is good enough for me. I don't need to be in these trenches. I'm here for a good time. That's all. A good time. And that's what the game is supposed to be. And, of course, they're going to do these boys wrong on the money. So let's stop talking about it because then we don't didn't feel so good about it uh, no more. <laughs> I'm trying to think. if there were, what, 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 what else is out here going on in these streets, man? I feel like like I just Belichick. got back from Iceland. I already I told to my Mike Tirico story. People, hey, do you think I'm picking on Mike Tirico? Like, people say Mike Tirico got to come fight me for this, and I don't understand it. I'm just telling people what Mike Tirico wanted to know. <laughs> Mike Tirico don't want them to know that no more. And no. you know it. I don't think he need to no, come fight you. No, he does want them to know he no, Italian. He no, he don't. No, Mike he Tirico. don't want them. No, he don't want them to know what 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 you what you think you see. <laughs> I'm telling them what he wants you to know because y'all out here assuming something different. Yeah, I think Mike Tirico would be happy if the Italian thing never came up. Why you got me saying Italian like that too? <laughs> Mike Tirico would be I happy Mike, if that. I think Mike. I think Mike Tirico would prefer that you talked about how Italian he was every single time he came up. No I think he way. would like you to hum the Italian national anthem. <laughs> Mike Tirico wishes he had never said that, and he wished that he could continue to go through life in a way where it was not something that he had to ever confront. And I'm sure, I'm not saying that you're picking on him, but I am sure that if you call Mike Tirico and say, hey, Mike, you like that I remind people that at one point you said you wasn't black, that you're Italian? And he would say, no, I do not like that. Maybe he don't want you to tell people that he's black, but he definitely don't want you to remind him the one time he said something that was just kind of outrageous on if i told him that italy and france was playing a friendly and if he wanted to go to a trattoria or something to watch it you think he wouldn't appreciate the outreach <laughs> no i don't think he would appreciate it Why i think not? mike Tarico, i think he's a cameroon fan uh, all i'm <laughs> all i'm saying is this <laughs> I, italy is the home of the fastest lamont in the world you remember that Le, uh, oh, a, 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 a cop from Italy named Lamont won the hundred meters at the last. I Olympics. do remember that. I do remember that. I don't think that. That's Mike, a, he, I don't so, think you're picking so that's up what Mike I'm saying. Tirico. On what level? On what level you think our man related? No, on no levels. Mike Tirico has. Uh, first of all, I don't think he wants to fight you. I don't think Mike Tirico wants to fight anyone. Nobody wants to fight at this age. He's older than both of us. I'm good on that. But I don't think Mike Tirico appreciates that we keep reminding people, or not we, <laughs> that. Someone keeps reminding me. Oh, that's what we do it. That's what we do it. That's what we do it. You had to kiss Mike Tirico's ass. Okay. I, I see I how it goes. Fight. I, I, I don't want to fight anybody, but I definitely don't want to lose to Mike Tirico. That's something I could never live down. Yeah, I'd say I would not be surprised if Mike Tirico came out here and whooped both our asses. That would not. <laughs> that, hey, man. I'm too old to assume. I'm too old. I made that mistake the first time I make, met Mike Tirico. I made the mistake of assuming. I told you that story. I, it was a pre. It was before Georgia Tech game, a Thursday night game. He was doing it, and it was the first time that it was like a black person covered the game. You know, the players like meet with the with the um the people during the game. Some of the players, and so I said, "What's up, brother?" Gave my man Mike Tarico a dap. And it was. It didn't go as smoothly as I had hoped, but I was like, "All right." Sometimes everybody mess up a dap, and then I went in to try to have the conversation, and we about two minutes into the pregame chat chat and i was like oh this is before all, all the italian stuff i was like oh okay i met you before mr Tarico. nice yeah, to meet my, you sir you, like i say you the one that's causing the problems not me that's all I'm, that's that's what i'm saying i would also I, I would also like hey look that's what he don't like he don't like what you did what did uh, i do i'm telling y'all how to, i'm telling y'all how that man would rather be treated that's all I'm doing. And I'm letting you do what you want with that information. Oh, if what you want to do with that information is laugh, then fine. But that reminds <laughs> me, man, I was in Iceland and I saw a brother and I gave him the nod. And he did not give me the nod. And I have never thought less of a human being before in my life. <laughs>
I, I took my family to Aspen um, for spring break last year, and that happened to me on two separate occasions. And I thought about changing. We went to Miami after that. We went straight from Aspen to Miami where I felt more comfortable. But I was very – it's like there's a – it's an eye contact. And, like, he looked at me like, oh, like, do I know you? No, but we in Aspen – and I also was – I remember talking about this on my show where it's – it is directly the aggressiveness of the eye contact and nod is uh, is directly tied to how many other people are around. So I'm in Aspen. It's me and him and maybe three other people who are not working. So if I see you, brother, like this, is, hey, hey, I don't know what we are communicating is I got your back if shit go down. I don't know what it is we're communicating. But hey, look me in my damn headlights, as my father would say. And give me a <laughs> head nod, my brother. Like, I, I, I just, that's, we know each other. That's all. And that man, two different guys there. I was like, oh, it was very get outish. And I was like, hey, what's up, brother? And they just look at me like, oh, you talking to me? Like, yes, I'm talking to you. Hey, man, them Icelandic people, I found them to be very, very nice. I want to be clear about that. I was treated very well, all of those things. But I need that cat to understand, okay? I need him to get this. I, I, we all we got <laughs> it may not feel like that right now yeah it may not seem like that right now we all we got can't believe in iceland of all places iceland was how many black people did you see while you were in iceland one two oh, three gosh. we had one hand four Let's five get one more six seven I absolutely saw seven. And there was, did all seven of them, or it was just one who did not respond appropriately? I had a conversation with two of them. Um, I saw a couple, and like, it was like a mother daughter pair. And so the head nod, it, it yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. you know, like, yeah, that's a little kids. different play, yeah. right? Wasn't exactly sure how to do that. Um, I saw one woman when I was in the city. And I think she was honestly surprised to see my lanky black ass walk past. And we kind of looked at each other, but didn't really know what to do. And so we get, we gave acknowledgement and then we like, I feel like kept this, it going. I mean, I guess everybody belongs to some, uh, group, but for people who do not understand this, I just had the thought that it's probably similar to like being in a away teams stadium or arena and you got on your home team Jersey and then you walk by yes. and you see, yeah, you you in Kansas City and you see somebody else in a Chargers hat. You're like, oh, OK. You, you, you're you like obligated. You don't got to stop and talk. But I feel like you're obligated. Like, all right, brother, what's up? And keep it moving. Yes. It just feels disrespectful not to. In college, it probably is even stronger. Yes, that is the way to put it. Uh, We're going to come back with more at the right time in just a second. Prize Picks is the most fun you can have by winning up to 25 times your money. And with the football season over, you can still win money with basketball and hockey. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. You can pick combo projections across multiple sports from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. And if you stick around for the end of the show, you'll get to hear some picks from our producer, Sean, that can either help you win or make you fail miserably. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Bomani. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Maintaining a relationship is hard no matter who it's with. I know I've had many ups and downs with some of the best people in my life, and that's okay. A common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy but to be right. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all your relationships, whether with friends, work, your significant other, or anyone else. Therapy helps you find your strengths and also your weaknesses so you can make the best out of any relationship 
in your life. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bomani today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bomani. When you're a sports fan, weekends can be a lot of fun. Spending time watching sports with your friends. Whether you're celebrating the success of your team or yelling at the refs for a missed call, it can be an exhausting experience. So when it's time to start another big week, celebrate Hydration Monday with Liquid IV. Liquid IV can help you feel revived and ready to take on the new week. Liquid IV is super easy to use. Just take a pre-measured packet and pour it into a glass of water, mix it up, and enjoy. You can take it at home before you start your day or take it with you to work or the gym. Plus, with their roster of flavors, you can easily find the right flavor for you and your taste buds. Weekends are for going wild. Have a game plan for Monday with Liquid IV. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code BOMANI at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today. Use a promo code BOMANI at liquidiv.com. Dominique, you say uh, Bill Belichick going to do some work with Nebraska? Yeah, he. I saw it go across the, the thing this morning and I looked into it. He's just going to do public speaking. And I guess he's just going to be out here doing cash grabs He's going there to speak to their team, I guess, or do some sort of clinic or something. So he ain't going to tell nobody no secrets. I don't know when Nebraska think they're going to get out of this. I hope they, uh, they expected no inspiration. <laughs> that ain't his bag, no. Nah. That ain't his, that ain't his game. Like, yeah. Right, Bill Belichick is a very bottom line oriented sort of person. It's very simple, fellas. Either you're going to do your best or you're going to lose your jobs. <laughs> Payday on three. The, the biggest, like... Uh, I mean, it's not even motivation, but like revelation to come out of the Bill Belichick thing that feels like unique other than his like adaptability uh, was that he would uh, evaluate players based on what they did well. And like, all right, you I don't care what you stink at. We'll find out what you stink at. and We're going to try to make it so that you don't do that anymore. It's like the most obvious thing. It's, it's similar to when we figured out that three points was more than two in basketball. Like, oh, yeah. Don't try to draft players and don't focus so much on what they do poorly. If you got tape of them doing some shit good, get them over there and make them do the good shit as much as you possibly can and protect them from having to do the stuff they're not comfortable with. Look, I just want to know when Bill Belichick, like he about to have more free time than he has ever had in his life from what I would guess here. Right. Like John Gruden, they said back, you know, when he was a broadcaster, he still treated his week like he did coaching. He's still waking up at four o'clock in the morning. I bet he's still doing that right now because he's dumb enough to think somebody's going to give him a job, right? He still believes that somebody's going to give him a job. Belichick going to have all this free time, and I just want to know what it's going to be like that first time. I don't know which of his friends is going to be, who's going to be the first person that's there with him, but somebody going to come over to him in that basement and who that first person going to be that says to him and goes, hey, man, you trying to hit this? What makes you think he ain't already? I'm just uh, everything, everything, <laughs> everything laid back. Yeah, everything. Every, I mean, I ain't never heard no former player say he seemed laid back. He just don't talk loud. Right. That's fair. like I don't I don't really see no lay back. I'm just all I'm saying is this. In a couple weeks, Bill Belichick going to be out here looking like Don Nelson looks these days. Everything going to change. Like for Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick going to be like that person that go to go off to college and then you see them, you 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 see them at, hi, at your your high school graduation and then the next time you see them is when they come back for the next high school graduation and they look like an entirely different person. We need to ship Bill some some tie-dye hoodies so he's comfortable. I don't know what it is or just uh some Jamaican flag hoodies. I don't know what it is, but when we were young, that was the thing. That was the, the overall signal. If you saw a white person in some Jamaican clothes or tie-dye, it was quite mm-hmm. clear what they, what they was involved in. But we started this talking about LT. I mean, I feel like Bill should have smoked a rock. 
Like he saw what it did for LT. He should have. He should. Uh, huh. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold oh, on, yeah, hold on now, hold fair. on now. Yeah, there's there's fair. a difference between blue collar and white collar work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> LT was LT's collar was the blue as the blue. Uh, like yo, he played like he smoked rocks. That goes over completely different than he coached like he smoked rocks. I mean, he he owes most of his career to him. Like that was the birth of he Bill does. Belichick, uh, football genius. Was Lawrence Taylor? You can't light a ball with my man. Yeah, actually, that sounds absurd, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I do love this Belichick going to Bill Parcells being like, Taylor showed up late for the meeting, and he was like, well, did you wait till he got there? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, what I love about that is, it's not some softy who said this to you. It's Bill Parcells. It's the same with Jimmy Johnson. Curvin Kirby, Richards fell asleep in that meeting that one time. Billy, uh, Jimmy Johnson cut him. They said, what would Jimmy have done if Emmitt Smith had fallen asleep in that meeting? He said, I'd have told somebody to wake him up. Absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, we all experienced this. It was, uh, Champ was a pretty studious guy, but we all would doze off in a meeting every now and then. If anybody doze off in a meeting, that would be in hell to pay. Champ doze off in a meeting, we all act like we ain't see it. Like, okay. He needs his rest, guys. Keep it down. Don't start coaching too loud. Like that was definitely the way. I'll be honest with you. I, it's very nice of Champ to even show up to y'all's little meetings. I don't know what <laughs> Champ needed to watch film for. To be honest, Nothing. like I look at Champ like Kawhi Leonard, like that oral history of Kawhi Leonard. The, uh, they did that time the board man get paid with, and they said the hardest thing for Kawhi Leonard was that they were trying to they were having trouble playing defense, and the coaches trying to come up with different ways to fix it. And Kawhi Leonard's question for his teammates was, "Why don't you just do what I do and stay in front of your man, and then we won't have these problems <laughs> on defense?" <laughs> what, what, what champ uh, need to look at a, at a videotape for? I, I mean, to to know where the rest of our mistakes will be, so he can cover for them. Like I don't know. That's it. I got um. I, I got Kawhi Leonard just, just completely not understanding the concept of help defense. Why does anybody need help defense? Why does anyone need help? And you are absolutely right about Champ. He was. I, I've told you this before. Where I tried to like, I got drafted by the Broncos. I was out there, and I was like, all right, perfect. I'm gonna do exactly what he do. It ain't take me but a couple of weeks of OTAs. Like, no, we don't play the same position. Like, we're not the same human. Like, it's ridiculous. It's like a giraffe looking at an eagle and, like, saying, oh, yeah. So you fly just by by waving your arms? <laughs> okay. No. I, I don't got it. I just – I'm not going to be able to do that. The the, diff, the um, experience in Baltimore was very different where there was, like, um, Ray and Ed, those was film guys. Like, they – Champ was – a member of the team and the most talented member of the team. Those guys were the team, like the, the culture of the team, the coach of the team, the like the soul of the team. So they would never fall asleep in the meetings because they was damn near running the shits. It's a whole <laughs> different experience uh, of Hall of Fame greats, but I couldn't do what none of them did, which is why I'm rapping with my guy, Bomani Jones. But, Yo, it's like, why would Ray Al- why, why would Ray Lewis fall asleep? He loved this. Ray Lewis is like, they about to show my favorite movie. Football, <laughs> port 855. <sighs> knocking necks loose. Knock, <laughs> not, knocking necks loose. I sent you that video of a man Rick sent me that one time and that person literally getting his neck knocked loose with a kick. Yep. <laughs> I was like, wow, his neck look loose as hell. Yeah. It's just such a perfect like description of it. I'm never gonna forget it. I've been using it all the time, always crediting uh Ray Lewis, even though I didn't hear him say it. You told me that he said it, but it's perfect, man. I'm I was knock playing your neck loose. <laughs> I, I was playing basketball this weekend with this 13 year old kid, and I I told him don't bring it in a lane and knock your neck loose just because I thought it was funny. <laughs> did knock his neck loose. Oh, he said his. I thought you said her. And I was, that's what I was going to say, Dominique. Did you, I mean, look, I'm I'm gender equity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm here for that. But I didn't, uh, didn't know. (laughs) And I was the older brother of one of my son's teammates. And he was there watching practice. So we just played one-on-one the whole practice. And I had to express to him that I got a little bit now. I ain't going to pop my Achilles out here. But you also ain't going to go around me like I'm, like I'm one of these average dads. Did he did he say anything slick? Uh, nah. I mean, he was talking trash at the beginning. It was like playful trash talk at the beginning. And then he realized that it wasn't going to be that kind of party. So we played. Hey, do you ball. have the authority to put somebody else's child on their ass? 
Absolutely. These are okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Well, I think it's. I think it depends on the relationship you have. I, I know his parents, and I know that his parents uh, would fully approve of <laughs> that type of treatment. And I didn't have to, but yeah, I I, I slapped a couple shots uh, into the into the bleachers. That was enough. What if he get into like a team game? A team game? It's teams. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Uh-huh. And the kid is in there, and look, he amongst groans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I mean, I think that's understood. Everybody knows. If you are in a game, <laughs> I remember this uh, from my my uncle got home after he had gone to uh, university. <laughs> and they they play ball. Oh, 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 oh. he went to he went off to to, to work on a, a long term degree. Yeah, he had to, he had to, he had to learn a trade. So when he got back, they play ball by different rules, and that was my first experience by that. And ain't nobody come save me. He would come in our backyard and play ball, me and my brother, and like fouls. Nah, he was definitely not concerned about our foul calls. And the thing about playing pickup is, even if you call a foul, you don't get free throws. Like fine, call it. Take your ass right back out there. You're going to get fouled again. You better learn to play through because sooner or later, one of them swipes is going to be a clean block. He's going to have good defense. He will foul you the whole game. Stop calling That's what I was about to say. All that foul call does is let me dial it up. (laughs) He couldn't shoot, couldn't dribble, couldn't nothing, but he could foul. (laughs) Hey, man, you see Justin Fields unfollowed the Bears. All yeah. the all the Insta. Why we have, we been doing this? This is not. I mean, I guess it's him expressing it his own way. But as soon as uh, we saw that draft pick uh, headed for uh, number one, whether they play well or not, I knew what was going to happen. We can pretend like we ain't know what's going to happen, but I knew what's going to well, happen. Well, well, this well, this is my thing though, right? Um, he did an interview. The, the St. Brown brothers got a podcast because everybody's got a podcast. I have a macro level thought on everybody having a podcast right now, which is very simple. If they give like if they offer you the money right now to do a podcast, go ahead and do it and get it right. But it, the truth is all these podcasts and the day still only 24 hours. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm throwing out there is that at some point, all those cats are competing for the same money. Right. And I don't even think it's like the same money that you and I are competing with, because I think the athlete market versus non-athlete market is two different spaces in what people are going for. Either way, either way, he's on that podcast and he gave a point. He said, look, man, just because I don't follow this girl on Instagram don't mean I don't mess with her. You know what I'm saying? He's just like, he didn't want to see stuff about them on the timeline. He's like, look, I just want this to get finished. I just want to get done, da, da, da. My thing was this. Do you realize what a herb you are to notice? Yeah. Like, like if you got an algorithm or a bot or whatever it is that's here to tell you that somebody unfollows somebody else, don't you feel bad being the person to come to report that information? Like that does not make you feel like a buster. Cause I would, I would feel like a buster if I'm the one sitting around trying to see who follow who I'll keep track of that shit for myself. Yeah, no, nah, it's pretty whack, but I also feel like that is not, I'm not a I'm not great on social media as everyone who follows me knows. I'm not all that active. But even I know that if you don't want to see something, you can mute it. Unfollowing somebody is a choice. So while I agree with you that being the person that is running to report this doesn't matter, it's still it's a newsworthy item like if somebody uh, No, if, it's not a newsworthy cuz it doesn't mean anything in the first place. It does mean something because it they know it means you was mad something. that night. It means okay. you was mad that day. Okay, that means something. You can pretend all you want, Bobadi, that this does not mean anything. Maybe it's uh, it would not mean anything to you, but the effort that it requires, I would never unfollow somebody. I don't even Dominique, block he people. He also or unfollowed the NFL. Is he about to go get a job? Because I don't think that means he's about to go get a job. I don't think it means it either. I do think it was. Well, we can't say it's not newsworthy while also talking about it. It's clearly well, newsworthy. I, to, I mean, I got, well, once it becomes news, it don't matter whether <laughs> I think it's worthy. You know what I'm saying? Like, once it's there, I'm just saying all of us have lost the plot to the point yeah. where we sitting around like, oh, Justin Fields unfollowed the Bears. Now let's put it in a rundown, and then we go talk about it, and it becomes a thing. That's all I'm saying is that that we, we, we the problem so, here because. I think you're right, but I think the point is, because it is a a way of communicating now. So like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I agree with you. It's like the idea of me rolling my eyes. 
if that did not have some sort of connotation with it, you would think nothing of it. And you're like, what's wrong with that dude's eyes? But we know now, Justin Fields knows. Everybody in sports knows. Unfollowing somebody is a message. So if this is not, if you're trying to suggest to me that Justin Fields doesn't know that unfollowing means something, then I would say, fine. It's not a news story. He knows by doing this that it's going to make news. But this is my problem with what you just said. And it's a larger macro level systemic situation, which is like to me, to follow somebody is not a declaration of any sort of affection. To follow is a means to allow me to get your content without me having to go and intentionally seek it out. I know that for a lot of people, they would unfollow me on social media and then go check my stuff later because it was so much that the mechanism of the follow was making it too difficult for them and it was thereby more convenient for them to just go look on their own. I say that to say, we never actually came up with a set of rules of what it means to follow or unfollow somebody. What we do is we make all the assumptions that we have derived ourselves and how our petty little asses would take it if we found out that somebody unfollowed us and thereby we project onto others what their follow and unfollow means. Now, I, as someone who gets unfollowed a lot or had been unfollowed a lot, I had to learn that didn't necessarily mean them people wasn't still my friends. It was a conscious choice, but it didn't necessarily mean the same thing, right? So now we sit up and we got people who develop their little bots to figure out who's unfollowing whom and doing all these things and then ascribe a significance that we believe that it has onto that person and maybe just maybe but it just don't want no bears news right now quite honestly <laughs> i wouldn't follow if i played for the bears why would i follow them i know what they doing i know yeah. everything that they up to nothing that you said was wrong yeah they're they're up to the same stuff they've been up to for pretty much the entire history, modern history of their franchise so everything you said is right and true the one thing I would say I would push back on is we never set the rules for any social customs. We don't set those rules. Those rules form themselves in the way that we react. And whether you agree with the way that the rules have developed now or not, you have to understand the context in which you are living. So Justin feels. So I guess my only point is, do you think that Justin feels knew by unfollowing that it would become a thing? I think the answer is yes. So then by doing it, he knows he is he is by doing that. He is comfortable with the message that comes along with that. That's all. I think it is fair for you to say that he should have known that we'd be a bunch of dumbasses about it. Hey. But we need to own the fact that the dumbasses is us. Right. Like whenever this happens, we need to lean in and understand that the problem is that in this day and age and in this world, you got to indulge the dumbasses. That is what we are required. That is that is what he is required to do because social media adults on social media, like people that like somebody behaves like a teenager on social media. No, social media turns everybody into teenagers. There is no real be if you are behaving like an adult on social media, you're probably not using it. Yeah, but I guess my point is if or my pushback would be he knows that he can mute something if he don't want to hear it. And he knows that by unfalling becomes a thing. It's like having the choice between not going to something or walking out of something like it's, it's but I guess it's fine. I wouldn't necessarily assume that somebody would notice. I wouldn't. Right. OK, well, and should, maybe he Justin should Fields, because he lives team, a different yeah. life. Yeah. Right. Maybe. Maybe he should. I don't know. This happens all the time. These cats. And you know what? You're right. Maybe he is engaging in the passive aggressive behavior of the unfollow and letting people know what the unfollow is. But when I hear grown people talking the same terminology of the passive aggressive communication to social media, it's, we got to, when the revolution going to start, man. Yeah. When we got to take, we got to take back control from these machines, man, because it's making it make us so stupid. And we, as the people who cover this game, me and you supposed to be the smart people. <laughs> That's what we supposed to be. And I'm having I'm having to talk to you about this in ways yeah. that honestly I'm a, make me a little worried. <laughs> it's, you have nothing to be worried about, but I am willing to acknowledge the world that we're living in without succumbing to it. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I, I have know. no shame in the, the um the way that I engage in social media as I'm comfortable with it. But I also have the responsibility to try to understand and yeah it's not a big thing yeah. he didn't go slap the general manager in the face but <laughs> i believe that he was trying to send us a message by doing that you can believe that he wasn't i'm not gonna like overstate the message but i think it's a uh, and i to my point to the point that i made earlier 
we've been new to this. Like, Newt is <laughs> my, one of my teammates from Texas said Newt all the time, and I love it. I'll never let it go. But we've been Newt this. We Newt this a yep. long time ago. So like, it's not news to me. I don't. We don't have to like if uh, if Patrick Mahomes unfollow the Chiefs tomorrow, we are going to assume that his thumb slipped, uh, right? Because that seems yeah. irrational. But and the so, fact that it's somebody on a team in a situation, like we we get it. It makes sense to me. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. This what 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 is that's all I guess I'm just looking at it all like what is this man because you're right about this ain't nothing changed because one thing about it is even if Justin Fields unfollowed him he don't get to decide when that's over they decide when that's over yep they could draft <laughs> Caleb Williams and bring his ass right back yep they could uh, poor Justin well he'd be all right I mean he'd probably be better off out of there but I'm sure yeah but I keep going. hearing people talk about the solution is going to Atlanta and I'm going I mean yeah yeah yeah. They are the Falcons. <laughs> I mean, they're talented. Every, I mean, the, the Patriots were the Patriots before they became the Patriots. So everyone could have a turn at some point. The they right could. Situation. You're, you're right. That's fair. And they just hired Raheem. Maybe Raheem is Bill Belichick. Quite possibly. I don't know. And Bill Belichick failed at his first uh, stop, just like my man Raheem. So maybe. And Bill Belichick happened. got a lot more chance to do it than Raheem. If we going to keep that's it real. Yeah, like a lot sure. more chance. But that is Dominique Foxworth. Check him out on the Dominique Foxworth Show and check him out worrying about who following who on the damn <laughs> Insta. I'll be there. Right fast, before I forget, uh, telephone number, 323-596-7767. 323-596-7767. A little Ask Me Anything for Monday's episode, 323-596-7767. Give us a call. Remember, Follow the right time. Subscribe, like, rate us, review us. Give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. And we'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy. 